Hello, I'm Jane Goodall. I've spent my life working with and for animals, and the greatest threat they face today is the wildlife trade. There is so much crime and corruption, as well as suffering, involved in the illegal trafficking of animals around the world, and it's driving endangered species to the very brink of extinction. It seems like an impossible problem to solve, but in fact, each one of us can make a difference. The video you're about to see describes this growing threat to animals around the world and explains how each one of us can make a difference. I hope that you'll join me in supporting Animal Action Week. Together we can create a better world for animals and for people. Wild animals have roamed the earth since the earliest times. Elephants, whales, great apes, tigers, seals, bears. These are among the stunning array of wildlife that share our world. We see them as an essential part of the planet and something that will be there for always. But will they? Wild animals are being driven to extinction at a rate never experienced before hundreds of times faster than a century ago. One of the main reasons is mankind's ferocious appetite to use them as a resource, to make money out of them, wildlife trade. A fifth of the world's animal and plant species could vanish within the next 30 years. This trade takes place in a variety of forms, as food, exotic pets, fashion, traditional medicine, souvenirs, and ornaments. It results in terrible cruelty and even puts human health at serious risk. Some of the trade is legal, but the illegal market is one of the largest criminal activities in the world, ranking alongside drugs and firearms. Although laws exist, detection and enforcement are estimated by experts to only be about 10% of the total. Who are the culprits? Well, we are. The simple truth is that if people don't buy, wild animals won't die. Wildlife as food has indeed been a local and vital source of food in places such as Africa for thousands of years, where it is commonly known as bushmeat. But the vast and expanding global commercial trade is putting species at risk. Eastern lowland gorillas are being wiped out in Africa at an alarming rate. In the past decade, their numbers have crashed by more than 70% to around 5,000. Chimpanzees have declined from 2 million a century ago to just 105,000. The hunted animals include primates, reptiles, birds, and antelopes. In the UK alone, more than 7,000 tons of illegal meat enters the country each year. Also, the logging of vast tracts of previously impenetrable forest has opened up the habitats of endangered species for poachers. Timber lorries are even used to transport bush meat to markets. It's not just on land that our appetite for wild animals causes devastation. Whales, the largest animals on Earth, are being hunted in increasing numbers every year. Although the International Whaling Commission banned commercial whale hunting in 1986, that has not stopped Japan, Norway, and Iceland from using loopholes in the regulations so they can kill about 1,300 of these gentle giants every year. Whale meat ends up on restaurant tables in Japan, where it is highly priced and regarded as a delicacy. DNA tests have proved that highly endangered species of whales 
are killed and sold in the same markets, even though it is illegal to kill them. Ironically, whale watching has never been more successful. In recent years, it has grown to be an industry worth around $1 billion globally, providing income and employment to many coastal communities. In fact, whales can be worth a lot more money alive than dead, but that still doesn't stop the slaughter by some countries. Another target for exotic marine food fans are sharks. Tens of millions are caught each year, and many of those have their fins sliced off while still alive to make shark fin soup, a much sought after exotic dish in many parts of Asia. Also, all species of marine turtles face the threat of extinction. They are in such steep decline because of poaching and habitat destruction. But there can be a very heavy price to pay for eating wild animals or from them being traded as so-called exotic pets. Human health. Diseases that animals can pass on include HIV and Ebola. Also severe acute respiratory syndrome, or SARS, which killed more than 80 people around the world in 2003. It's estimated SARS cost the global economy more than $50 million and it's believed to have started from civet cats sold in the wildlife markets of southern China. It's estimated that around 75% of emerging diseases affecting people come from animals. Perhaps the saddest of all wildlife trade is caused by people who love wild animals so much that they keep them as exotic pets. The so-called pets range from tigers and lions to apes, reptiles, and exotic birds. In the case of tigers, there are more than 10,000 being kept as pets in the U.S., compared to only about 5,000 left in the wild. IFA worked to rescue 24 tigers from one New Jersey private residence. After a lengthy legal battle, they were removed from terrible conditions at their owner's home to a safe sanctuary at the Wild Animal Orphanage. In all, more than 10 million wild animals are estimated to be kept as exotic pets around the world. Sadly, most owners are completely unaware of the cruelty involved. Often, out of every 100 wild animals captured, 90 will die in the country, nine in transport, and just one makes it to its new home, far from the wilderness that is its real home. Many tourists are equally ignorant of how their holiday mementos can be illegal and that by buying, they are contributing to the cruel trade. Products made from elephant ivory, such as chopsticks, hair slides, and name seals are commonly seen in markets. But most people don't know that poachers killed hundreds of thousands of elephants or their tusks cutting African elephant populations by more than half in two short decades last century. Asian elephants are highly endangered, with less than 50,000 in the wild. Unlike African elephants, in Asia, only males have tusks. They are the only ones mainly sought by ivory poachers, which has severely skewed the male-female ratio of elephants, making the population dangerously unviable. IFA works in Africa and Asia to train law enforcement officers on the ground and in the air to combat poaching. High-tech equipment from airplanes and global positioning systems to low-tech tents, boots, flashlights, and even life insurance are giving the frontline rangers the confidence and pride to protect the wildlife in their countries. Other animal parts used for tourist trinkets include turtle shells, reptile skins, and seashells. 
fashion is another wild animal killer. Endangered Tibetan antelopes are hunted so their underfleece can provide the fine wool that makes shatu shawls, which can sell up to $20,000 in Europe and America. According to official estimates, there are only 75,000 left, and as many as 20,000 are killed a year to supply the illegal trade. Big cat skins such as tiger and leopard have long provided high-priced furs despite laws to ban their use. In this sting in Russia, these men are caught selling tiger pelts by a hidden camera. In Canada, the baby harp seals are killed in their hundreds of thousands, so their pelts can be sold to the fashion industry in Europe and the Far East. This is the largest marine mammal hunt in the world, with the annual killing quota of 350,000 seals sanctioned by the government. Traditional medicine has a long history in the Far East, with an excellent record for healing and general health but the growing popularity of traditional medicine has taken a heavy toll on wildlife. Bears, rhinos, tigers, leopards, musk deer, turtles, and many other animals are killed so their parts can be used to make medicines for which there are often many plant-based alternatives available. Particularly cruel is the farming of bears in China for their bile. Bears are kept in tiny cages with a catheter in their stomach for constant bile extraction. Bear farming not only is cruel, it has also depleted wild bear populations in China, causing local extinction. Bears rescued from this cruel practice are living a free and happy life on the Ifa Sanctuary in Guangdong, China. They are ambassadors to Ifa's campaign to end the use of bear bile in traditional medicine and protect bears around the world. And so it's clear that wild animals are under threat from all sides, as exotic pets, food, fashion, souvenirs, medicine. But efforts are being made to turn the tide and make saving wild animals a priority. Cities, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Fauna and Flora, is the conservation organization with the job of ensuring wildlife trade does not put animal species at risk. IFA and others constantly campaign in this forum for more protection, but it's an uphill struggle against others who see commercial exploitation of wildlife as big business. At the same time, much is being done to enhance the fight against wildlife crime. Interpol, the international police organization, has begun a new initiative supported by IFA called EcoMessage. EcoMessage aims to improve the tracking of the criminals involved by sharing information between wildlife law enforcers of different countries across the globe. Often the criminals involved in illegal wildlife trade are also culprits in criminal activities of other kinds. One area where a real difference can be made is closer to home. Much of this trade in wild animals ends up with normal people, not crooks. We can make a difference. The beautiful wildlife that helps make our world so special is being driven to extinction because mankind is consuming them at an unsustainable rate. We grow up surrounded by the images of these wild animals. Our stories are full of them, and some of us go to see them in the wild on holiday. But to ensure that they can continue to enrich our lives and the lives of future generations, what each of us can do is not contribute to the cruel wildlife trade. As we have said, if we don't buy, they don't die. The road to extinction is not a long one for many species. If we want them to be around in the future, then it's time for us to act and start by making sure that at least we are not part of the problem.
Let's keep wildlife wild.